everybody, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Katie, otherwise known as the Vintage Academic. I am a transfer student at UC Berkeley. I study anthropology and archaeology, and I'm currently a rising senior. School starts in about two weeks for me at the time of filming this video. I am very nervous about it. <laughs> and on the theme of being a transfer student and school starting soon, in today's video I want to talk about some of the things that I wish I knew about transferring to Berkeley before I came here. Now before I really begin this video and start getting into the things that I have to share with you guys, Take everything I say with a grain of salt. I transferred in fall 2020 during the pandemic, so everything that I am going to say is of course through that perspective of doing online school and not being on campus with my professors and fellow classmates. I am sure that I will have much more to say about this and have many more videos to come as I step foot onto campus for the first time for in-person classes, so stay tuned for more videos like that. All right, now let's get started. The first thing that I wish I knew about transferring to UC Berkeley is that Hi there, Editing Katie here. I had to interrupt the video because I realized I forgot to mention one of the most important things that people need to know before they transfer to Berkeley. And that is the amount of reading that you have to do as a Berkeley student. Now, if you've watched other videos before about being a Berkeley student or you've watched my videos about doing like my homework and what homework is like at UC Berkeley, then you might already know this. But if you're new to the idea of transferring to UC Berkeley or being a student here, something you absolutely need to know is the amount of reading that you're going to be required to do. Now, the thing is, when it comes to the required reading, is that you're not going to be able to read everything and that is totally okay. There are definitely strategies for coping with the amount of reading that you're going to have to do and learning how to read strategically and critically and not go through every single thing, you're going to have to learn how to pick and choose which things you really absolutely do need to read, how to skim, how to read the intro and conclusion, so on and so forth. My two pieces of advice for this topic when it comes to reading at UC Berkeley is to one, take a reading heavy course in community college before you transfer, something like a literature course, a critical thinking course, an English course, anything that gets you reading a lot and reading critically and thinking critically about that reading. That's going to be super important and in fact my science fiction and fantasy literature class that I took in community college, I credit that class with helping me be able to successfully read the amount of stuff I have to do for Berkeley. Second is to learn how to do structured reading, which I will leave a link to a workbook that I made below through Accepted Consulting, and that workbook will take you through all the steps that you need to know to apply structured reading so that way you're not reading through every single thing, you're reading critically. And by the end of it, you should be able to pull out the important bits of information from any article or textbook chapter that your professors will ask you to read. So that was the very first thing I actually wanted people to know and now let's get back to the video. Housing is going to be difficult. <laughs> if you're an incoming student, regardless of if you're a freshman or a transfer student, something that you definitely need to know is that housing in the Bay Area is hard to come by. Not only is housing impacted so there's not enough physical buildings and houses to house everybody who lives in the Bay Area, but it's also extremely expensive. Now Berkeley does have a couple of options for housing, but Berkeley doesn't offer guaranteed housing, especially not for transfer students. Of course Berkeley has the dorms, they have university apartments, they have themed housing, there's also the cooperatives, and there's also private housing, such as myself, I live in an apartment that I rent from a landlord. So there are options that you can sign up for, and there's even transfer themed housing through UC Berkeley. But the point being is that if you want to get onto those lists for those housing options, you've got to sign up for housing like as soon as you get admitted to Berkeley. Berkeley does do its best to assign housing to every single student that signs up for university housing. But again, the Bay Area is severely impacted in terms of housing and there are 30,000 undergraduate students at Berkeley, so you can see how it might be an issue. Also, if you are not going to do university housing because university housing tends to be more expensive and you want to get a private apartment like I did, start looking for apartments fast, like the second you get admitted to Berkeley. Housing, like I said, goes really fast in the Bay Area and it's going to be really expensive. So if you're planning on moving into a private apartment, start searching for apartments sooner rather than later. And if you need to split rent with somebody, start looking for a roommate sooner rather than later. Berkeley also has a roommate matching program, which is for more than students who are living in university housing. So if you're looking for a roommate that's been vetted by the university, that's an option. And you can also look for like Facebook groups that are geared 
towards transfer students and housing for students at Ewing University. The next thing that I wish I knew that I want everyone else to know is the realities of living in a big city. I grew up in Davis, California, where UC Davis is, and it's a relatively small city. The majority of our demographic comes from the students who come to, for school at UC Davis, and then the rest of them are usually people on the older side who are having children. So I grew up in a very small, safe town where it was okay for me to go out and about by myself as a teenager, and it was even okay to go out and about at night. But Berkeley, being in the Bay Area, and being a large city is not the same as my small hometown that I grew up in. The big city of Berkeley obviously has things like homelessness issues, it has um, higher rates of crime and violence, and it's probably more unsafe for an individual like myself to go walking around at night. It's more expensive, it's a little bit harder to go and get groceries because I don't have a car, because I don't have a parking spot. Essentially, there's gonna be a bit of a transition or a little bit of culture shock maybe if you're going from growing up in a small little hometown like I did to living in a big Bay Area city like Berkeley. I imagine the same is true for other universities like UCLA and UC San Diego, but the point still stands that if you're going to be going to UC Berkeley and you grew up in a small town, maybe take some time to visit the city before applying here or before accepting your offer of admission to see if you actually like it because it can be big and overwhelming. And personally, as somebody who moved to Berkeley during the pandemic, something that I've been struggling with since coming back from my summer job is the fact that there are a ton more people here than there was when I first moved. I got very comfortable with Telegraph Avenue being relatively quiet, with there not being massive crowds on campus, and since I've come back for my summer job and I'm getting ready for the fall semester which is going to be in person, all of the new transfer students, new freshmen and returning students are back in Berkeley. So it's much busier, much more crowded than it used to be. And so not only does the pandemic anxiety get to me, I'm having a little bit of social anxiety too. So, you know, take the opportunity if you have it to come and visit the city that where you're going to be going to school and living in to see if it's something that you actually vibe with. <laughs> the third thing that I wish I knew before accepting my offer of admission to UC Berkeley is the summer transition courses that Cal offers for transfer students. Also, the fact that transfer students are allowed to take summer classes. If you are like me and you are excited and chomping at the bit to just get going on your UC Berkeley education, then something you should know is that transfer students are allowed to take summer classes between finishing at their community college and starting at UC Berkeley in the fall. I personally took advantage of this. I took three classes. Um, two of them were actual lectures and one of them was what they call a transition course. And the transition course is specifically designed to help give transfer students an easier transition into UC Berkeley by providing them community resources, network, and small assignments that kind of get you going on the feel and rhythm of being a UC Berkeley student. This is something that I wish I had known because even though I was pretty much 99.999% sure that I was going to accept my offer of admission from Berkeley, that is still something that would have incentivized me to say, yeah, I want to go to Berkeley because they provide more accessible options for transfer students. The fourth thing that I wish I knew before transferring, and this one is so important, is to get on scholarships super early. In fact, the advice that I give a lot of my clients through Accepted Consulting is that if you're you're interested in getting a scholarship as a transfer student, go and look at the scholarship databases at the universities that you've applied to, even if you haven't gotten into them yet. At least this way, you know what kinds of scholarships are available, what their deadlines are, and what kinds of materials you're going to need to submit for them. So that way, once you do get accepted to your university, you can go ahead and start applying for those scholarships immediately because most of those scholarships deadlines and shortly after transfer admissions have been released. There were a ton of programs and scholarships and fellowships and that kind of stuff that I definitely would have applied for had I not missed the deadline. So for all transfers out there, including transfers to UC Berkeley, get a head start on applying for scholarships. Number five, take a look at decal classes before you finalize your schedule. Now, if you've never heard of decal classes, if you're just watching this knowing nothing about Berkeley, decal, which stands for Democratic Education at Cal or UC Berkeley, are classes that are organized and taught by students. Now, decal classes are an awesome way to get that extra one unit that you might need to fill out full-time units because full-time units is 13 units, but our classes are four units each. So the way the math usually works out is taking three four unit classes and then one one unit class to get to 13 units. And decal classes can be so fun. I mean, decal classes, they range from like 
calligraphy, to microbiology 101, to women and gender studies or LGBTQ themes in Harry Potter, and essentially anything you can think of that a student might be interested in, they're probably teaching it. And if you take a decal class and you like it, maybe you have something to offer in a decal class in the future. But definitely check them out before you completely finalize your schedule because there are a lot of really cool opportunities there. The next one, number six, is that Berkeley really is not all that scary. I know Berkeley has a huge reputation and it kind of has a negative reputation, especially in terms of things like people being incredibly competitive or not being nice to each other, or being uptight and stressed out and depressed all the time. I think every university and every single individual at a university is going to have its shortcomings, but that doesn't mean that the stereotypes are necessarily true and it doesn't mean that a big university like Berkeley has to be scary. Making a big university or a big anything, the process of making it less scary for me is by breaking it down into community. Sure, I'm going to a university with, like I said, more than like 30,000 undergraduate students, but the anthro department is like 250 students, 65% of us are transfer students, a lot of us are non-traditional students, so we're a little bit on the older side. Maybe I could go to the archaeological research facility and start making friends with other people who are interested not only in anthropology, but in my specialized field of archaeology. So there, I've taken an entire university and narrowed it down to like a small select group of people. Not saying that you shouldn't go outside of your comfort zone, but that's a way to find community and make a big, huge, scary place seem a little bit less scary. <laughs> The next one, I think number seven, is to please, for the love of God, talk to your professors. <laughs> I mean, this isn't something that I wish I knew before coming to Berkeley because it's something I already did in community college, but for anybody who's, again, feeling that pressure of being at a big university and feeling kind of scared and feeling shy, they might not go out of their way to talk to the professors, but it's probably one of the most beneficial things that you can do as a college student. Sure, going to lecture and paying attention is also incredibly beneficial, but forming relationships and networking with professors is going to lead to opportunities, letters of recommendation, perhaps getting in on a project, and it also puts a face to the name that they have on their piece of paper in front of them when they are teaching hundreds, potentially thousands of students. So talk to your professors, talk to your TAs, or as we call them at Berkeley, graduate student instructors or GSIs, so that they can put a face to your name and they just, they know you as a person. If you are having trouble talking to them, you don't know what to talk about, my advice is to look into some of their research and come to their office hours with questions about their research. Professors love talking about their research because it's what they do. They teach and they research. So if you're feeling nervous, don't know how to talk to your professors, go in with questions about their research. It'll open up conversation. It will show that you're interested and had the forethought to look them up before coming to their office hours. So please do not be afraid of talking to your professors. I've had many amazing opportunities through talking to my professors. The next one, something that I wish I had thought about before transferring to Berkeley, is that we need to take the time to appreciate where we're at. I mean, for me, I really only get one full year of actually being on campus, and for the rest of transfer students, it's gonna be two years if, if hopefully we don't go back to online classes. But the point is, um, the time can go really fast. I already finished my junior year, and it felt like I blinked and I'm a senior now. So definitely take the time to slow down and appreciate the campus, go study at the library, if you can, like form study groups on campus, explore the buildings, take advantage of like the recreation facility and all the sports and activities that you can do because we only get two years as transfer students and it's going to go by really fast. I now only have one year of in-person opportunities and I can't wait to just get onto campus and dig my fingers into every single opportunity I can catch and somehow I'll balance all of that with my other responsibilities, but I'm just really excited to finally be able to go and study in a library or even take a tour of the, the Campanile, like see their tower, or go into the buildings that I've literally never been inside of before. The only building I've been inside of is the Anthropology and Art Practices building because I snooped around there before I was a student. I took a tour of the Phoebe Hearst Museum and I went and snuck into the Anthropology Library. That's the most that I've seen of Berkeley and I've been a student here for an entire year already. So please, take the time to enjoy your campus. The next to last one that I have is to get involved in undergraduate research apprenticeship programs or the UREPs. The UREPs are projects that professors are working on that could use the help of undergraduate students to do some of 
honestly some of the grunt work, like helping out in the labs or doing data entry or being a research assistant. But the Europe's are specifically designed to give undergraduate students that research experience that's going to be really important for them going into graduate school or going into like a future career. I think the Europe's are amazing, a fantastic way to get experience. Just I love that they have a program that involves undergraduate students in such a way that it's more accessible because sure some universities might have undergraduate students working on research projects but not through like a formalized system like this it might be like a gotta get buddy buddy with a professor but this way you don't have to necessarily know anything about a professor you can apply for the position you do a little interview and if they think you're a good fit invite you to work on their project with them and it doesn't really require much interaction beforehand if that makes any sense i did know about the europe's before transferring to berkeley but i wish i had known how cool of an opportunity they would be um so definitely take a look at those if you're thinking about transferring to Berkeley and maybe that will help you make up your mind. <laughs> Last but not least, one of the most important things that I wish I had known before transferring to Berkeley is that you might be behind. You might have to catch up a little bit and that is okay. If you're anything like me, coming to Berkeley as a transfer student, you might be feeling a little imposter syndrome, which I completely understand. And again, if you're like me and it took you extra time to get through community college, my introductory anthropology courses were like four years ago at this point, so when I got into one of my anthro classes at Berkeley and they started talking about processualism and post-processualism, I was like, oh. I know those words, but I don't remember what they mean, and I'm so far behind, I have no idea what's happening, what's going on. It's okay. It happens to everybody. The best advice I can give is to go back to your community college coursework, your notes, your homework assignments, and just give them a review. Like, especially if what you're having trouble with is maybe some of the vocabulary, just pulling up a textbook or a Google search just to refresh your memory, it's totally fine. You got into Berkeley because you got into Berkeley. They looked at your transcripts and your essays and they decided that you would be a student that they wanted at this university. So you are not dumb, it was not a mistake, you are not too far behind that you can't catch up, it's gonna be okay. This is something that I personally suffered through. I spent a lot of time going back over my community college coursework at the beginning of fall 2020 semester and by the end of my junior year I felt totally caught up and I have a good grasp of what's going on and I understand the concepts that you need to understand to be successful in upper division courses. So, well that was all that I had for today's video. 10 things that I wish I knew before transferring to UC Berkeley. If you are a new transfer student, congratulations, welcome. I can't wait to have an in-person semester. If you see me on campus, please feel free to come up to me and say hi. I would absolutely adore that and yeah. All right, well, good luck. I believe in you. It's gonna be so exciting. And um, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and if you liked it, subscribe for more UC Berkeley and sometimes vintage and archeology span related content. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.